I just spent an absorbent amount of money to get early access to Dragonlance so you don't have to. And today, we're looking at the Lunar Sorcery Sorcerer's Origin subclass. This entire subclass is focused, as you probably guessed, around the moon, specifically three phases of the moon. The full moon, the new moon, and the crescent moon. Each of these phases doesn't have to do with the actual in-game moon. It is phases of things that you can actually transfer in and out of. So like a totem warrior has a stance or a type of bear or tiger or whatever the heck they have. You have a full moon, you have a new moon, and you have a crescent moon stance that you can effectively go into to get different benefits. Now that we know how the class functions, let's take a look at these subclass features that we get starting at level 1. First, we have Lunar Embodiment, which is effectively what every spellcaster gets, an extended spell list. But this one functions similarly to the phases of the moon we were talking about, where each phase of the moon, depending upon what phase you're in, changes the spell list that you have access to. Each of these spells, like every other spell list, is a sorcery spell for your purposes and does not count against your spell slots known, so keep that in mind. Um, but when you are in your full moon phase, you get access to, uh, I believe, abjuration and divination spells. And specifically, you get shield, lesser restoration, dispel magic, death ward, and rary's telepathic bond. Full moon is all about abjuration and divination spells. And like the other ones, they're going to be focusing on other schools of magic. New Moon, specifically, is all about enchantment and necromancy spells, and specifically gives you Ray of Sickness, Blindness Deafness, Vampire Touch, Confusion, and Hold Monster. And finally, if you're in the Crescent Moon phase, you gain access to Illusion and Transmutation spells, specifically Color Spray, Alter Self, Phantom Steed, Hallucinatory Terrain, and Mislead. Like I mentioned, these are each Sorcerer spells for your purposes, and you can cast one first level spell through your associated phase that you are currently in, off of the table without expending a spell slot per long rest, and once you finish a long rest, you can then change your phase that you are currently in. You wake up one morning and say you want to be in a full moon phase, which would then give you access to shield, lesser restoration, all those spells, and then you go take a long rest, and the next time you wake up, maybe you want to be in a new moon phase and then you get access to the different spell slots there, or spell lists there, rather. Alongside that expanded spell list, you also get access to a feature called Moonfire, which, if you're a World of Warcraft player, uh, sounds familiar, and it kind of is a little bit familiar with how it functions, but effectively, you get the Sacred Flame cantrip for free, does not count against your cantrips known, and it is a sorcerer spell, and when you cast this spell, you can use it as it is, as normal, or when you cast it on a target, you can also hit a target within 5 feet of your main target as well, effectively doubling the value from the spell as long as they're within 5 feet of each other. So it's kind of like a small little AoE moonfire beam, uh, similar to how WoW functions. Next up, we have the 6th level feature, Lunar Boons, and this one, this specific feature right here, is what makes this entire subclass and takes it to the next step and honestly potentially game breaking or overpowered. This feature specifies what kind of spell schools are associated with each phase of the moon. Like I mentioned earlier, full moon is abjuration and divination, new moon is enchantment and necromancy, and crescent moon is illusion and transmutation. Now, depending upon what phase of the moon you are currently in, you can, whenever you use your meta magic on a spell that is currently associated with your phase of the moon, you can reduce the amount of sorcery points needed to cause that effect by one. While it might initially seem a bit restrictive based on the phase of the moon that you're in, it's actually incredibly powerful for a few reasons. First reason, at 6th level, you technically have three, uh, plus 3 to your proficiency bonus, and you can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, meaning that you effectively get three free sorcery points for this feature, which is crazy considering sorcerers normally go meta magic attic to get the extra sorcery points from that feat, whereas if you're a lunar magic sorcerer you no longer need to worry about that because you effectively get three free automatically off the bat at sick level. Plus, the fact that this increases as you level up with your proficiency bonus, maxing out at a whole six free sorcery points as long as you use them in tandem with these spell schools that are listed here. The other reason this is actually bananas crazy powerful is because at 6th level you also get access to another feature called Waxing and Waning, which allows you to use your bonus action at the cost of one sorcery point to switch your phase of the moon. 
Let's say that you want to cast Blight and then empower that with a Sorcery Point. But it's kind of inefficient because you're currently in your Full Moon phase, which is focused on Abjuration and Divination spells. What do we do? Well, we take our bonus action, spend a Sorcery Point, swap over to our New Moon phase, so we have our Enchantment and Necromancy spells empowered, and then we can use our Blight, empower that with our Sorcery Point for effectively no Sorcery Points, because it reduces the amount of Sorcery Points needed, and bam, you've got a free Empowered Blight, and you can continually do that, and if you wanted to change again, just swap over again to another phase. As long as you have enough sorcery points to do that, you can continually swap with your bonus action. And while that might not necessarily be ideal, it's a really easy and quick way to honestly save a lot of sorcery points, even though it seems like you're wasting a lot. Either way, the Lunar Boons feature for this subclass is what makes this subclass amazing and opens up the possibility where sorcerers don't need to take the meta magic at it anymore because they effectively get sorcery points here rather than that feat, enabling them to take other feats or, you know, ability score improvements if they want. At 14th level, we gain the feature Lunar Empowerment, which like the others is all focused around the phases of the moon that you are in. When you are in the full moon phase, effectively you can use your bonus action to shine bright light in a 10 foot radius of you and dim light within another 10 feet of that uh, and any creature that you choose within the bright light has advantage on investigation and perception checks within that bright light that you shed. Overall, this is a really nice perception and awareness buff, but kind of lackluster for a 14th level feature in my opinion. If we're in the new moon phase, you have advantage on stealth checks, and whenever you're entirely in darkness, attack rolls have disadvantage against you. This if I'm recalling correctly, doesn't really mean much as far as I'm concerned because when you're in complete darkness, doesn't that already grant disadvantage on attacks against you unless they have dark vision or blindsight or something like that? So honestly, unless I'm mistaken, and even if I'm mistaken, it still feels kind of lame because no one's ever going to be fighting in darkness if they're a smart party anyways. Uh, unless maybe you're in a group with like a shadow monk, uh, but even still, that's kind of iffy. <laughs> Uh, and finally, if you're in the Crescent Moon phase, you have resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. Now you tell me which one of these phases you like better. Do you want advantage on investigation and perception? Do you want advantage on stealth? Do you want resistance to necrotic and radiant damage? I thought so. <laughs> the problem with this feature, in my opinion, is the fact that there's pretty much one clear winner here, and that's Crescent Moon. Um, Full Moon and New Moon, advantage on stealth checks, advantage on investigation and perception, are really nice features and really nice boons to your class to kind of give it to people. But realistically speaking, advantage on perception checks, perception is one of the highest, maybe not highest value, but perception is arguably the most focused uh, skill in all of 5th edition, if we're being honest. Like, rogues, rangers are really good at this perception stuff, so why do you need to give per advantage on perception as a sorcerer? That doesn't really necessarily make sense to me. Investigation? Maybe so, but you know what? Who knows? New Moon. Advantage on stealth checks. That's nice. You can just go invisible. Why waste an entire feature on that? Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Resistance to necrotic and radiant damage? That is brand spanking new. I don't think you can get that from many other things in D&D 5e currently, so... There's clearly a better focus here, in my opinion, and I feel like it's very much overshadowed by the Crescent Moon phase. But anyways, let's go to our final capstone feature, the Lunar Phenomenon 18th level feature. As a bonus action, you can tap into your special power of your Lunar Embodiment phase, and you can use your bonus action to change your phase uh, immediately using a power of the phase that you change into. So effectively, whenever you change into a phase we're using a bonus action, you get to use a special effect. If you swap into the full moon phase, you radiate moonlight for a moment. Each creature within 30 feet of you must make a con save equal to your DC or be blinded until the end of its next turn. In addition, one creature within that range regains 3d8 hit points. Okay, so you blind creatures with a con save. Con save's not very good because at higher levels, constitution modifiers and monsters are pretty crazy, but it's still nice to blind monsters and get a free heal as a bonus action. Okay, kind of cool. New Moon, you momentarily emanate gloom. Each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 3d10 necrotic damage and have its speed reduced to zero until the end of its next turn. In addition, the sorcerer immediately becomes invisible until the end of your next turn or until you make an attack or cast a spell. 
another really cool kind of thing here, where rather than focus on healing or blinding, you just flat out deal damage, which is really nice, and the fact that you get invisibility here is a really nice safety feature as well. And then finally, Crescent Moon, where you magically teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within 60 feet of you. You can bring along one creature that you can see within 5 feet of you, and you both teleport to your destination space, and you and that creature gain uh, resistance to all forms of damage until the start of your next turn. Now, if we look at all of these objectively, they are all very different in what they do. Full Moon heals and blinds. New Moon deals damage and makes you invisible. So a little bit of damage, a little bit of protection. Crescent Moon teleports you and one other creature away if you want, and also makes you both resistant to damage. Now, each of these has their own unique ways of being used and are super, super versatile in what you can do with it. I guess now we should get into the thoughts about the subclass. I think this subclass is really, really cool. I think because it works in like kind of three columns with the different spells and the different schools of magic and everything like that, it makes them incredibly versatile at doing different things. You can protect and he well, heal your allies, uh, you can deal damage and uh, enchant your enemies, or you can trick and protect uh, with your Crescent Moon spells and stuff. It is very free-flowing, and it opens up a kind of new play, uh, play style of player where the difficulty isn't going to be uh, the power of the sorcerer, right? Because the sorcerer is always going to be strong. It's got the spell slots. It's got the sorcerer points. It's got all these other stuff. What this school is going to struggle with, or what this uh, subclass is going to struggle with, is the balancing and juggling of your phases, right? Because if you want to get the bonus from your damaging spells, you're probably going to want to be in your new moon phase, uh, but new moon doesn't really give you a lot of um, combat focus, so you're going to want to swap back to your crescent moon phase when you get a chance. Uh, there's going to be a lot of juggling between... Uh, phases of the moon which is going to be a little bit difficult for a newer player to get used to so all in all i think this subclass is going to be incredibly powerful and very strong uh, i don't think it's a newer player friendly class just because of how much balancing they're going to have to do but at the end of the day i think the lunar sorcery sorcerer's origin is bananas you know getting two to six free sorcery points um, getting resistance damage, a bunch of free spells. Effectively, you get 15 free potential spells, which is a huge list. Um, and realistically speaking, I don't think any other class gets that many free spells. Um, just because of how this spell and subclass function, it's really unique, really cool, and I would love to see more of this kind of stuff coming out of Wizards of the Coast. But anyways, that is the Lunar Sorcery subclass for the Sorcerer in Dragonlance. Um, let me know what you think of the subclass down below. I think it's going to be fun. I think it had potential to be overpowered, but I think that it reins itself in a little bit by restricting the Sorcery Point stuff to the phases of the moon. And I think it does a good job of kind of requiring people to swap phases, um, which I think will also reduce the potential for overpower that this subclass has. But I'm not a game designer, I'm just a D&D player and a DM, so that's my initial thoughts. If you like the subclass, if you don't like the subclass, let me know. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I know this video is a little bit different than my other ones because it's not as edited, so let me know what you think. Um, but either way, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on Friday.